now I want to introduce Simple.js. And Simple.js is just a simplification of JavaScript where I will define the abstract semantics and then the concrete semantics is uh, an S expression which I'll show you in the next few slides. Uh, so Simple.js was just created by me uh, for this course and it has the following syntax where you can have variables, you can have uh, let binders so where you can define, you can declare a variable. And you've learned about let binders in, in the, for JavaScript, right? So this is the same idea. Um, you have a way to read fields from an object. So you can do x dot y. So you're reading a variable dot a field name. Um, and you can assign expressions to a field of an object, right? Uh, and you can call a method. So you can do x dot y, and that will call method y of object x. That's the only way you have to call, there's no functions. So there's, it's the only way to call something is by calling a method. You can create a function uh, with a name that declares, a, that is used for a constructor, right? And you have a way to call, uh, to create an instance of um, an object or a class by invoking a constructor. Uh, there's also a way to define a class syntactically, like I showed you in the in the in the previous lesson. So where you can extend another class, so you can give it, you can call define a class with a name and then extend some other class, and you can define constructors and methods. So to make things a bit more concrete. If you were to write the program in the left in JavaScript, in simple.js, it would correspond to the following code. So you would write uh, let shape. So the way you define this function is with this bit, where you create a function that is unnamed, you assign it to shape, a variable. Uh, and then inside the body, right, we're doing uh, this.x equals x and this dot y equals y so that's the same as writing begin set exclamation mark this dot x okay so the assignment is used with the keyword set exclamation mark it's sexually common in racket so you can use set exclamation mark to overwrite to mutate a variable in racket but i just disallow it in the um, in the auto grader um, then you can allocate an object by calling uh, new, right? So you do new shape here, and in, in, in this syntax, you would write new and then pass the constructor, which is a function, and then you pass the arguments of the constructor. Okay, so this is exactly this code right here. Uh, and then you can see a continuation. So in this case, I want to first, um, I want to get the object that is assigned to shape.prototype. So I can do that by calling, uh, defining this temporary variable. Uh, and then if I want to say shape.prototype.translate, because we only have syntax for a single uh, object.variable, we need to create a temporary variable to store shape.prototype. And then the result you do, result.translate. So that's what we're doing here. First step is the first lookup, this one. Uh, and then with the variable shape proto, you can look up the, the field translate. In this case, what we're doing is we're assigning this method that has x, y. Uh, and the way we do this is by, um, first, this is this assignment, corresponds to the set. And then this function corresponds to this code right here. You'll notice that there's a begin. And that's just to sequence multiple commands. Okay? It was also evident here. Uh, so in this case, we wanted to do two assignments. Um, and... What is this? This set x. What is this? Exclamation mark plus. Oh, I think this is just a typo. This should just be plus. Yeah. Plus this dot x. I don't know why there's this exclamation mark. I'll fix the slides. Should be shouldn't exist here. Oh okay. oh okay, I know what it is. Now I remember. <laughs> this is not a typo. This is just so you can use the plus sign because I showed you in uh, this syntax, right? And I didn't show you any way to call a function, but actually you have one, which is this with this exclamation mark. 
that's how you call a function. So this is saying call plus, and then you pass the parameters. And it's only used for, for the sake of writing this example, because with the syntax I give you, I don't give you any syntax to call a function, and you won't have to represent, translate this code. Okay, finally, when you translate a, func a method call, uh, sorry, when you have this method call where you're calling translate, uh, it simply you call object.field, and then you pass it. In this case, if you want to return p, you just return the p right here. Okay. So hopefully it's not too complicated to go from here to here. The only weird thing I think, or I mean, the only two th weird things is firstly, that you have to store the first assignment in a temporary variable. And secondly, that you need to uh, prefix function calls with this exclamation mark. Okay, so the, the, this is the running example, right? Where we're defining shape and we're creating an instance of shape. The second example that we have was, or the second example that I showed you was the rectangle that extends shape.prototype. Um, and you can see almost everything is the same as before. Uh, the assignment here is the same as here, so nothing too surprising. Um, the assignment of the assigning let of R1 is also called here. The only difference I think is that you have to chain, right? So if you have semicolon, this represents the continuation. So it needs to be nested inside the let. I think that's the only kind of different thing. Other than that, seems like the same. Okay. Um, and then, ah, this, this code actually has a bug, which is interesting. Um, or, or maybe it has subtle, it has a subtle bug or subtle possible bug. It kind of depends on what you want to do. Because when you define rectangle.prototype equals shape.prototype, what you're doing in, in, if you were to write that in JavaScript, what that would do would be, it would say that the prototype of rectangle is the same as the prototype of shape. So if you change cha shape, you would change rectangle which is expected because they're extending. However, if you change rectangle, because they're the same, it would be changing shape as well. So usually you don't want to write this code in JavaScript. Uh, and the way to fix it is you would wrap this around uh, an object and prefix and assign it to the field proto, which is uh, what happens, Ah, which is what happens here. Another thing you can do is you can, um, yeah, so here we are defining a new function and then we are assigning the protocol, the prototype to that function, right? And then we inherit, so we add a level of indirection, right? So what we're doing literally is creating a, a temporary function or an object that is, points to a shape and then the prototype of, um, rectangle points to this temporary object. Uh, so that's a trick because ideally what we would like to write is this. And the way to write this, right, we add a level of indirection, the way to write this with this syntax is by these three lines of code. It would be cool if you understand this, why this is happening. I think that's an important bit. Okay. Again, this pattern is very important to understand. And the, the basic idea here is because you don't want to change, uh, when you change rectangle proto prototype, you don't want to change shape, right? That's the whole point. You don't want to do, you don't go to there. So the way you do is you create a new object, you link it via proto, and then whenever you add a field, you're adding a field to this new object and you're shadowing shape. So you're never touching shape. And that's the crucial point here. And in short, the code here is equivalent to these three lines of code. Okay, that's the point. Okay, so um, next I want to introduce uh, Lambda.js, which is our target language. 